Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Aaron Chikowski. I'm a principal content developer with Microsoft. Um, I've been with Microsoft for 14 years, something like that, 13, 14 years. Um, was, started out Microsoft Consulting in the DC area and then moved out to Redmond as a PM on the product team and was a product team PM for about five years and a couple years ago transitioned over to the docs team and uh, I've been happily working with that for the past uh, two and a half years or so. So thanks to uh, everyone for having me here this morning and um, I guess I can share maybe if Teams is going to behave. It's always the question and I make sure I get the right screen. I think this is going to work. All right. Of course, now I lost the other screen, but hopefully you can. Uh, let's see. Let me bring that back up. Oh, you're going to see all our internal chat too. Huh? <laughs> hopefully there was nothing too uh, <laughs> too raunchy there. Okay. Um, hopefully Teams won't completely freeze on me. All right, so uh, I wanted to start actually, um, hopefully you all have seen this on Twitter, but in case uh, David later or um, maybe Michael forgets to mention it, um, there is a survey that was posted, both DJM and Rob York and a bunch of others have retweeted this, uh, aka.ms and then WFH underscore CMX underscore survey. Uh, it's a survey that we put out uh, asking folks to, um, give give ideas uh, the team the engineering team has been working hard uh, you'll see that hopefully you've seen that in the tech previews and you'll see that um, you know over the next couple of months as well working on a lot of um, technologies and support for scenarios to help you help your customers uh, and and your clients working from home uh, and so a lot of uh, focus on remote scenarios so uh, we want to hear from you you know what what other things do you need? Uh, so hit that survey, fill it out, send in your response. For those of you that have already responded, thank you very much uh, for your um, for your inputs. OK, so um, I was going to talk about in general today. I want to you know, spend some time talking about docs um, and how to use the docs, but uh, because kind of the overall theme of today is around remote workers and uh, and and all that, I wanted to spend a little bit of time up front talking about some of the content that we have available specifically for remote work. Um, so let me get to the right screen and a good place to start as always is the config manager documentation hub page. Now under slash mem slash config MGR, we moved uh, to consolidate with Intune a couple months ago. Uh, so you'll find both Intune and Config Manager now under this uh, under this mem doc set. Um, a lot of this is organized logically by uh, kind of the different areas of things, um, but um, you, you'll find a lot of remote work scenarios are are already top of mind. So you'll see a lot of them here at the top um, in these tiles. So from from all the different cloud attached things such as as tenant attach which is new in 2002 all the all the good cmg stuff for cloud management gateway <clears throat> co-management uh, desktop analytics a lot of good content there um, co-management i wanted to point out if you are looking into co-management thinking about co-management um, a good place to start is the quick starts uh, so this does uh, this we put out uh, a little over a year ago it's got a little intro video here from Brad, uh, and there's a bunch of articles here that go into, hey, what are some of the things you can get right away with co-management if you go out and enable it? Um, and then some other videos uh, from a bunch of the PMs. Um, you know, you'll see Rob York and Heidi Chang, um, Dan Guillory, you know, a bunch of folks that that I'm sure you uh, you recognize, um, doing some videos here and talking about, you know, how to use how to use co-management. So that's some good content to get started with. Uh, with CMG, so I just actually made some updates to the CMG content uh, this week. So um, nothing radical, nothing you know, uh, too massive. 
Um, but, uh, you know, it was a bit of a refresh here and, and, and took some, uh, fixed a bunch of issues. And I'll, I'll talk more about issues if you're not familiar with those. Uh, so a lot of the feedback that we've gotten from customers have, have fixed a lot of that. Excuse me, Aaron. Um, yeah. Can I interrupt you just a second. Um, so you're you're sharing your whole desktop. So can you maybe go full screen on your on your browser window so oh, we sure. can get a full full effect? Awesome. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thanks. Good feedback. Thanks. Um, yeah. So a lot of good stuff here on cloud on cloud management gateway. This has been like our number one content uh, for the past couple of months. Uh, this this one article, uh, the the usage of this one article shot through the roof <laughs> over the past couple of months, uh, as well as all the other CMG content. Um, so you know, wanted to take uh, some time and and fi and fix some of the issues we had with it, make some improvements, uh, and make sure it's it's the most up to date and accurate. Um, you can also see some of you may recognize. Well, I'll, I'll drill through here so you can see his uh, his full shining face. Um, Jason Sandys, uh, uh, a good Texas boy, uh, former MVP and and now and now member of the Microsoft uh, Microsoft family. Uh, he's also been contributing a lot here, so you'll see his face on a lot of a lot of the articles for CMG and and some other areas. <coughs> um, OK, so that's CMG um, tenant attach. So tenant attach a new feature in uh, in version 2002. And so we've got a landing page here. Uh, not a ton of content right now, um, but if you've been keeping an eye on the tech previews, you'll see that there's a lot more coming. Uh, so just in uh, 2005 tech preview, I think we had four new tenant attached features in just that one tech preview. Uh, so a lot more coming on tenant attached. Um, you know, make sure to check that out. It's a great way to cloud enable uh, your config manager environment uh, and start using the new Microsoft Endpoint Manager admin console uh, in, in the Azure portal uh, to, to be able to view information about your on-prem on -prem devices. So you know, great for for help desk scenarios where they just want like a, a cloud console, right? They can view information out of Config Manager just using a web browser. Uh, some great, uh, I think there was either a tweet about it or maybe someone wrote a blog um, actually doing uh, in a tech preview doing CM Pivot from their phone uh, using using the the Endpoint Manager Admin Center on their phone. So that was pretty cool. Uh, Windows Virtual Desktop, um, there's, you know, if you go under the Windows uh, content, um, they've got some, some more information on um, Windows Virtual Desktop. Uh, specifically for us, there's not a lot. It's basically just, hey, we support, we support Windows Virtual Desktop. Um, so actually, you know what, I'm not, I'm not gonna bother go looking for that right now. Autopilot, so Autopilot, again, it's also all the content is currently under the Windows content. Um, FYI, we are in the process of consolidating the autopilot content also under MEM. So um, it's currently under Windows, but we're actually be moving it and uh, relocating it also with MEM because it is part of the Microsoft Endpoint Manager umbrella of, uh, of features. Uh, so coming soon, uh, you'll see Config Manager, Intune, and Autopilot all under the, uh, the MEM banner. And actually, if I step back to the mem hub page so the mem hub page is going to show <clears throat> intune config manager and autopilot right now autopilot all this is linking off to uh, that windows content so this is a great way to be able to access that uh, it's just go to docs.microsoft.com mem and then you can find you know easy access to uh, to all three uh, and then soon again we'll be merging the autopilot content in under under this mem umbrella Okay, uh, Defender ATP. We, um, I think we added a link here. Yeah, so we've got some content on, on Defender ATP. Uh, this, uh, we've had some functionality uh, in Config Manager for a couple of years. I, I actually was a PM on some of the original integration that we had years ago. Um, and then just recently have improved that. And now it's a lot more, uh, uh, Cloud connected, uh, so some some great improvements to the uh, the ATP integration uh, just recently. Okay, so that's just kind of a quick overview of a lot of the kind of 
cloud attach um, and and you know remote worker stuff that we have in our content. <clears throat> so you'll get a lot more information about this over the rest you know the rest of the day. Uh, but I just wanted to give you kind of a summary of some of the content that we have available for those topics. Uh, one of the big questions that we get from folks uh, is is hey what's the roadmap for config manager what's what's new what's coming up uh, best answer there look at the tech preview uh, hopefully you are actually installing the tech preview and using the tech preview and providing feedback on the tech preview um, both from the new functionality but also from just day-to-day -day use uh, so hopefully you know put tech preview in your labs start using it and um, and give us feedback uh, because the, you know the way the the build process works is that's that's the same code that we're going to you know ship as part of current branch that you'll use in production. Um, some things will be turned off, obviously, uh, but uh, you know you want to make sure that you're you're validating stuff in tech preview and giving us feedback, uh, even if it's not on on the new features. But to get a sense of what's coming in in current branch, hey, what's coming in in current branch 2006? Um, Look at the tech preview, uh, install it, start poking around. At a minimum, go read, go read the docs. Um, we certainly see a lot more um, traffic on our docs for tech preview than we do installs of tech preview. So it's great that folks are, are reading the content and understanding what's coming up. Uh, but uh, um, you know, it'd be great to also have you know you installing it and using it. But this is the best way to kind of see what's coming. Uh, so from tech preview. To 2005 and then back to 2004 and 2003 uh, there's a good you know strong possibility that most of these features you know not necessarily all of them uh, there you know there are always instances where the quality of a specific feature isn't quite production ready yet um, and so we decide to hold it for a future release uh, but for the most part uh, if you see the tech preview you know the team's working on it and hopefully it'll be coming up soon so that's the best way to kind of understand what the uh, what the roadmap looks like for config manager. Um, if you weren't aware, I also wanted to call out in the console under the community workspace is uh, a node for documentation. Uh, this node has actually been there for oh at least a year, if not more. Uh, we did just recently also add the community hub uh, for customers on version 2002. Um, and uh, so the, the documentation node, you know, it's a great way in console to, you know, get access to the doc library, um, see some list of recommended articles. Uh, so so you, you'll notice some similarity here in some of the things that I've already talked about, right? And sort of in terms of tenant attached and desktop analytics uh, and, and co-management. So, you know, a lot of the, the kind of the hip cool things uh, and things that the team is investing in and, and, and working on and, um, and we think you know really kind of strategically important sort of topics will be right there at the top. Also, you'll see what's trending. So what's popular? Uh, the data we pulled data. I pulled data at the first Monday of the month. So I just did it uh, this week, and uh, pulled the data for the prior month. So you're seeing trending articles here from May, um, and again, plan for plan for CMG uh, with just a, you know a huge a huge amount of traffic. Uh, and uh, you know log file reference. This is almost always at the top of the list. Uh, so log files is is always a topic that folks are um, are always hot on. Um, I did just reach out to the engineering team yesterday. It's 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 been something that's been kind of a work in progress, but we're trying to come up with a more formalized process to get better reviews of that content once. Um, you know, before a current branch release, uh, just to make sure, you know, get the engineers actually to look through it and figure out like, hey, is this still accurate? Is there more information we could add? Are there more logs that we should be adding here? Um, oops, switched to the wrong window there. Uh, and then recently updated. So um, this is not all of the articles that were recently updated. I trim it, I trim it down to the top 10, sort of top 10 most interesting ones. Um, but uh, you know, gives you an idea of kind of where we're making some changes uh, and some things that have changed recently. So, for example, support for Windows 10, adding in uh, support for version 2004 of Windows 10. Some of the CM pivot you see here, um, Megan Stewart, who's my coworker and, and colleague on the content, she made a, a, a ton of improvements to the CM pivot content. Um, and uh, and yes, you know, some other articles here that that were updated. Um, 
and I'm just FYI, guys, I'm keeping an eye on the on the internal chat, not the not the the Q and A outside. So if there is is a uh, a question that comes up that uh, might be good, just just let me know. Um, I'm not not keeping an active eye on on the list of questions over there. Okay, um, I mentioned Community Hub and wanted to call that out. Um, debating whether I want to. I'm not going to open it up in this environment. It's our internal dog food environment, and I don't know what's there. So um, I didn't look at it beforehand. <clears throat> oh, actually, sorry. Let me go back. Um, I, I, I should have kept going and, and talked about. So also on this page here, we also have, and again, this is in console, uh, some, some troubleshooting articles. A lot of these are, or some of these are links out to support Microsoft.com, some KBs that have some um, some detailed troubleshooting steps to help you with different topics. Some of them, it's new content in docs.microsoft.com. Uh, so for example, troubleshooting application deployments. This used to be a KB article uh, and we, gosh, this was, that was last year at some point, um, one of our uh, support gurus, Vinay, helped to migrate this content over to docs. So um, under the apps, apps management area of our content. There's this you know, big troubleshooting section here to help you troubleshoot app deployments. Uh, so a lot of really te uh, deep technical in, uh, information here to help you uh, troubleshooting apps. And uh, we'll be moving, we do have some plans to move some of this information over from, from support, um, but uh, a number of these are actually uh, in, in docs now. Uh, and then some new and updated support articles. Uh, so Brian Honeycutt from our um, sustained engineering team, he updates this uh, on occasion uh, and, and adds in and you do interesting KBs. So look for this in the in the documentation node of the community workspace uh, and, and refresh it on occasion because we do update it at least once a month. OK, um, right, so Community Hub. Let me go to what's new in 2002, because I did just, oh, I think this is, oh, this may not have published yet. I did make an update to this yesterday. Oh, it did publish, good. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, we added Community Hub uh, just recently. So um, there was, there's a new capability as of version 2002, where we can enable new features, new, new cloud, uh, backed features. And so the community hub is kind of one of the first ones where we've done that. Uh, so a lot of the, the in product code already shipped with version 2002. There was some back end work that needed to happen. The team just recently finished that up and, and verified it. So we were able to cloud enable that. Um, it doesn't mean that it automatically enables it for your environment. Uh, it just means that it's, it's there and ready for you to enable. So you still have to go into, uh, into updates and servicing in the console and, and enable that feature if you want to. But it's a great way to be able to share content uh, between sites. So right now it's just a Microsoft curated content, um, but the team is working on uh, opening the system up to leverage GitHub to allow uh, the community to be able to contribute scripts and reports and all sorts of other content into the community hub and share that out with, with the community. Uh, so, um, get in there you know if you're on version 2002 you know go uh update the uh your your list of features enable it go check it out go start using it give us feedback uh and then look for more there in the future to start you know letting folks share stuff uh community hub um, i also wanted to mention i made uh we added some new content recently you might have seen this on twitter for collection evaluation uh, so this was uh, this was actually a blog post that uh, a PFE named Scott Breen wrote. Uh, he's actually now a PM. Uh, Scott Breen, he's, he's based in Australia. He wrote a blog uh, a while back on collection evaluation. And just recently, we migrated the content over from the blog uh, to docs. So it uh, goes into a lot of detail, a lot of real good depth on collection evaluation and how that works. Uh, and, and we also updated the best practices article for um, for collections, so a lot of good information here, making sure that you're keeping your collections healthy and how you're managing, <clears throat> you know, managing collection evaluation and and incremental updates and all that. So definitely go check that out. 
would be remiss if I didn't talk about admin service, knowing that uh, that's a, a hot topic, especially for for Adam Gross uh, and a lot of folks. Um, but um, I put that Yay. In. Yay. <laughs> um, we've added uh, in 2002 added release notes uh, and some uh, some additional documentation for admin service. Admin service is uh, is also a big deal for um, you know for cloud enablement uh, because this allows you basically programmatic access to your site um, over over HTTPS. Uh, so uh, a lot of what you're seeing with tenant attach uh, and a lot of the other cloud enablement features is using admin service. Um, so, um, you know, this is just kind of the start of giving you additional information so that you can start doing the same sorts of things. Um, but uh, there's this whole section now under our developer area for admin service. Uh, so you can go read up more on admin service uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and, and look for more information here. Um, working with the engineering team on how to make more information about admin service available and maybe even do some automation. Uh, we've been having some chats about using Swagger um, to help, you know, to help automate a lot of this process. Um, on the topic of developer content, I also wanted to bring up PowerShell. Our PowerShell content is actually in a different location. It's under the PowerShell area of the documentation because it is a PowerShell module. So it's integrated there. I do see we need to change our strings. <laughs> um, I've I've been working very closely actually with the PowerShell team to improve our PowerShell content. Um, there's been uh, you know some feedback filed from the community, uh, some pull requests filed to to contribute and update our content. I'm working to get that fixed. Um, I'm also working. Uh, the, the primary thing I'm working on right now actually is getting. Um, at least some stub content in for everything for for all of the commandlets. Uh, so if there's been instances where you're like, hey, commandlet such and such is missing, it's just there's no documentation for it. Um, we've got a process that I've worked with the PowerShell team to um, to understand, you know, how to automate getting that information out and publishing it. So I'm working on that pipeline right now. Um, once that pipeline gets fixed, then I'm going to fix the synchronization um, between the our private repo that we have where we do the publishing and the public repo where uh, where feedback is filed and and contributions are made. So there's some work to do here still. Uh, it's a work in progress, uh, but we are trying to improve our uh, our PowerShell content to get you the information that that you need there. OK, so that's kind of a, you know, um, little intro uh, on some remote scenario stuff and some and some kind of what's new stuff. So now I'm going to transition and talk uh, more about in general kind of how to use um, how to use content. Um, I'm going to hit on kind of four four main topics, how to search, so how to find stuff, um, how to get notified uh, of 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 new content um, so that you don't have to you know wait for an event to listen to me to tell you what's new um, how to how to give feedback and then hopefully if we have time i'll get into how to contribute as well uh, so let me switch to my notes over here um, so just some some searching tips um, oftentimes you know people will come to me looking for content hey where do i find such and such uh, and um, so trying to help people better find things. Uh, so I will switch over here. Yeah. Um, so my first tip is, um, you know, using the the search engine of your choice, um, but scope scope your search, drmicsoft.coms. Um, and and that then will help to make sure that hey you're you're searching in in our content, um, give the proper short term, um, and this is also it's it's in the URL. So historically, I told people to use SCCM, but we have migrated away from from that doc set. Now it's configmgr. So make sure you use that keyword, and then whatever you want to search for, right? So if we're going to search for BitLocker. Um, there you go. The first hit is playing for BitLocker management uh, in in our content. Uh, it's important to note too when you're searching, make sure if if you're if you're not using, or even actually if, even if you are using this, um, this is going to throw it off. But um, I'm trying to think of something I could search for that would 
show it. I'm not going to bother. Um, <laughs> if you see docs.microsoft.com previous versions, that's old content. OK, uh, so sometimes I'll have people send me links um, to you know, something like docs.microsoft.com previous versions. Yeah, I don't know what this is, but we'll see what comes up here. Um, post recovery tasks. Here we go. Post recovery tasks in, in configuration manager. So they'll send me something like this and be like, hey, this this doesn't look right, right? This is um, or or what does this mean? And this is always a red flag because um, this is this is always going to be either um, 2012 R2 or or 2012, or I think there's still 2007 <laughs> content on previous versions, um, which we actually need to get rid of. And I'm going to make myself a note because I thought of that the other day. Um, we need to go and retire that content. So avoid things that are on previous versions, unless you happen to be supporting a 2012 site, um, which is a whole nother <laughs> conversation. Um, hopefully you're not, uh, but if you do get search results that go to previous versions, be wary because it's going to be for old old versions of the product. So make sure that it's going to uh, memconfig MGR. <clears throat> um, if if you know you're searching for something, I mean this is a this is a pretty easy search here, right? But if you're searching for something and you're not you're not quite finding what you want, uh, or hey, it's below the scroll, or gosh, you got to go to a second page of search results, let us know. Um, file an issue. And I'll, I'll show you how to do that in a little while. Uh, and let us know, you know, um, what search, which search engine you're using, what keywords you used, uh, and what you were trying to find. Uh, a, we can help you try and find it, and B, we can potentially go and fix our content to make it better optimized for these search engines. Okay, um, the other way to search is if you're actually in our content. There are a couple of good ways to search. So first is up in the upper right of, I think, every page on docs.microsoft.com. So, um, oh, and I should also mention, a lot of what I'm talking about here uh, is not specific to Config Manager. Um, I'm using Config Manager because that's that's where I live, um, and, and most of you, I assume, live as well. Um, but a lot of this uh, guidance applies to Intune content, to Azure content, SQL, um, most of the Windows content, uh, you know, most everything on docs.microsoft.com, you know, PowerShell, uh, .NET, uh, whatever, right? There's a there's a ton of content on docs, um, but a lot of what I'm talking about applies to all of those different areas. I'm just using Config Manager uh, for for demonstration purposes. So uh, if you go to search here, so you know we're in the in the protect area of our config manager content, but let's say I want to jump over and look at stuff around software updates and that's specifically something around WSUS. So uh, it's automatically going to scope the search to config MGR. Um, so we've got a search scope that's set up so that when you're in the config manager content and you search for something uh, there, it's going to automatically look inside of our content. Um, so then you can see, hey, here's some articles in our content that, refu that reference WSUS. Uh, so that's an easy way then when you're inside of our content to be able to search. Um, if you're in, there's another uh, way. So the, the table of contents on the left hand side is basically all the articles in this section. So you can see here we're in the protect section. Uh, I'm going to flip back to the hub page because as, as I mentioned earlier, there's the, the hub page also kind of uh, shows all of the different areas of our content, all the different sections. And really all of these tiles that have a see more uh, are different sections. So we've got a different section for co-management, desktop analytics, apps, OSD, uh, core infrastructure. So if you're in one of those sections, the table of contents on the, on the, on the left-hand side here is specific to that area of content. So you can filter inside of this list for uh, strings that might show up here. So I can filter here for BitLocker. It's going to show me all of the articles in this table of contents that's for BitLocker. Uh, so nice little pro tip here to be able to find stuff. You know, if I search here for WSUS, oh well, there is one <laughs> around um, for for endpoint protection. Um, but uh, if I search for you know log files, oh okay, we do have some stuff on log files specifically for BitLocker. Um, but uh, how about ports? Oh, the reports. Gosh, okay. Um, but like, you know, the ports article, 
you know, that main ports article or the main logs article, right? That's under core. So you'd have to switch over to the core area. And then here I can filter on ports and there's the ports article, or I could filter on logs, log, <laughs> and there's the logs article. Um, so, you know, some of these table of contents can get pretty deep. Uh, if you ask me right now, where is the log article in the table of contents? Um, yeah, <laughs> I'd find it eventually, but uh, easiest way, just, just filter the list. Because uh, again, some of these table of contents get a little gnarly. All right. Um, Oh, adding a search engine. Yeah, so uh, both the uh, the new Edge, Edge version 77 or later, uh, to use the official the official name, or Chrome, uh, you can do the same. Let's see if I get the. So in uh, this is this is the new Edge. Go to settings. Uh, it'd be a little different in Chrome, but uh, this gives you the idea. And then um, services. I did this the other day. Okay, services. And then down at the bottom is address bar. And then manage search engines. Uh, so it brings up the list of, this is the default list of search engines. And you can see I've actually already added one here. So let's go in. You just, you'd click on add to add the new one. And I'm going to edit to show you what it looks like. So you can give a name, you know, whatever you want here. It's just a, uh, just a name. This is the keyword that you're going to use. Uh, so I use docs. You could do whatever you want. Docs.microsoft.com, uh, our search engine. Tell it to search. You give it the percent %s, which is the string that you're going to search for. And then you include the scope. Did this. There we go. That scope again. Okay. So scope it into config min gr. Now when you go to the, I'm going to open a new one just in case. Come into here. I type docs tab. Um, it's now automatically scoping to the content. Um, and you can see here it brings up the docs uh, search engine and search directly. So great little tip to be able to make it easier to find, uh, find stuff there. Uh, oh, cool. Sorry, just looking at a, a, a chat. Um, Glad to see that uh, at least a comment from Discord that uh, um, a lot of this is new to folks. So that's great. Um, good to hear. Um, that's always a worry is that <laughs> I'm going to start showing some stuff and people are like, yeah, okay, gosh, this is boring. I know how to use the freaking docs, dude. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I've gotten into the habit of trying to just um, keep on 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 message and, uh, and, and keep getting the word out because I know there's folks that uh, – <clears throat> This is new too. Um, okay, so notifications. I'm going to briefly mention on notifications. Honestly, it's not easy. <laughs> um, the the best way to get notified, uh, there's really two ways. One is use this RSS function in in our search engine. Um, if you were to do it right here, you're going to get notified on all of this content, all 55 results. Um, but if you scope your search plan for builder management and include this part, okay? Because that's that's part of that search result. If you, oh, oh right, quotes, sorry. Plan for BitLocker management. I should have pasted this. That can work now. Okay, well, it gives us two results. That's not bad. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure why it's showing this other one, but anyways, um, now if you hit RSS, uh, if you use RSS, you could you could uh, you know subscribe to this, and you'll see that it gives you the published date as part of that. So then, when that date changes, your RSS uh, feed will update, and you'll get notification that 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 page changed. Uh, so that's that's one way of doing it. The other way is uh, actually I don't want SMS docs. You could. <clears throat> this is my um, oh come on. No, let me just go back. Ah, not that back. <laughs> this is my test account that uh, I use for some demos. I'll just go to SEC Docs. Oh, this is my repository over there. <clears throat> so this is our old repo. I'll switch to the new repo. Private one. Um, so you can watch the repository. 
I don't recommend this. <laughs> um, it generates a lot of traffic. Uh, the public one may not be so much. You're going to see any issue that gets filed, any pull request that gets filed, any comments on issues or pull requests, um, anytime they're merged, uh, all sorts of stuff. So you'll see a lot of traffic. Um, I, I suggest leaving it at the default. Um, obviously, there are 23 people who are watching the repository um, and getting a lot of email and hopefully they've got good rules that are set up um, because it does generate a lot of traffic. So uh, those are really the two ways of getting notified of, of changes to docs. OK, uh, let's talk about issues. So uh, and and giving feedback. So again, on pretty much every. Um, every article on docs. There's a couple things. One uh, up up in this corner here. Is this page helpful? Yes or no? You can use this. Um, <laughs> it, it gives us a binary signal um, and then you can you can submit some additional feedback. You can say, hey, this is great or whatever. Um, it's it's anonymous and um, there there it, it is tracked. Um, it is looked at, I should say. It's not like we're, we're not tracking you again. It's anonymous, um, but it is it does it does come up in our dashboards um, of, of of information about articles. But it's not something that at least our team looks at actively. Um, so I much prefer uh, using the built in uh, GitHub feedback system uh, because then it's a little more interactive. Uh, but that is one way of sharing feedback on articles. Uh, so up again, up upper right corner here is on all of our pages and most content on docs. There are some that don't enable feedback, but most do. Click on feedback. It drops you down to the bottom. Every section you'll see this this feedback section at the bottom. The first one, this product, that'll take you to user voice. Uh, so if you are reading an article uh, and it's something about the product where it's like, hey, this describes something in the product that I don't like, go file something on user voice. Um, I mean, there, obviously there's other ways of sharing feedback for the product in terms of you know filing a frown or filing a smile from the console, um, but uh, you know this this will link out to to user voice. Then you have the option to file for this page. And so if there's something on this page that um, just, you know, doesn't seem right, um, you know, maybe it's really out of date, something's unclear, confusing, something's just flat out wrong. Um, I was going to actually show as an example, when I was looking at our, our article. Um, so a lot of what I'm talking about also. I had the wrong URL here. I had the wrong URL here. I haven't updated that URL. Um, so I could go to feedback. Um, and some of you also, if, if you're familiar with the system, you may notice that things have changed recently and it's actually not showing uh, existing uh, issues if there are any. Uh, there was a change recently where, uh, and it's still a work in progress. So for now, if you want to see, hey, are, are there any issues already filed on this page? then uh, you have to select this option here to view all page feedback and that'll flip you over to GitHub and we'll show you for this is just an ID for that article. So in this case, they're not already not already any feedback filed. So if I click feedback for this article, uh, it's going to pop me over to, to GitHub. Um, I can enter a title to describe what's going on, um, enter my feedback and then Leave this alone. It's a whole bunch of metadata that helps us uh, identify the article. If you are, uh, if you just go straight into the into our repository uh, and file a new issue, which is fine, you can, but it's not going to link it back to that article. So if you do go this route, you don't see all that metadata. Make sure you drop in a URL so we know which article that you're providing feedback on. Um, I kind of jumped ahead a little bit here. I want to make sure that I also talk briefly about joining GitHub. So if you don't already have a GitHub account, go do it now. Seriously, stop listening to me. Go to GitHub, <laughs> create an account. Um, <clears throat> it's super easy. You go to uh, this probably won't work because I'm already logged in. <laughs> OK, open up a new private window. Oh, that's not going to work because uh, fortunately I did that from my public account that doesn't have access. Okay, 
Um, so super simple. You put in a username, you put in your email address, you put in a password, you sign up. Uh, it's free. Um, the sign up process is super easy. I'm not even going to demo it. It's so easy. Um, a couple of things to note. Let me find my cheat sheet. Yeah. Um, and I'll show you my show you my work profile because that's a little more interesting than the yeah so set up your profile um add a picture you know it's it's a it's a public profile um i think you maybe you can control whether it's public or not um, or at least what aspect is public uh you know who are you if you have any affiliations if you're an mvp if you work for a certain company certainly if you if you are using kind of your work persona, uh, make sure you check with your organization about uh, if they have any policies around contributing to open source, because this is an open source platform um, and some some companies might be a little different on their their policies around that. Do note that contributions to docs does count towards MVP awards. Uh, so. Um, FYI, uh, if you, if there are any Microsoft folks that are listening and this is news to you, um, when you go to sign up for GitHub, uh, there's a couple more steps that Microsoft folks should do. Uh, so just email me internally and I can help you with that. Uh, I do strongly recommend when you set up your GitHub account, come into under security and set up two factor auth. Um, I've got mine set up. It's using the LastPass Authenticator app. Uh, so, uh, you know, great way to just have an extra extra level of uh, authentication. Okay, so where am I going? Let me put that back to there, and then feedback. So I talked about filing an issue. Um, so then, what that looks like, I'll show you a list of. Here's our list, our, our current list of issues. Um, and remember, we're now this is the this is the same repository that manages content for uh, Config Manager and Intune. So you'll see some Intune issues here. You can select these labels uh, if you just hey, I just want to see stuff for Config Manager. So you can narrow it down just to you know what are the current issues that are filed for for this. Um, we do have some folks that. Uh, help us out and they'll look at the issues and they'll be like, oh, hey, I can I can go fix that. Uh, and and they'll actually then go file a, a pull request uh, to to fix some content. Uh, so. Um, yeah, OK. Um, nice thing about filing issues is. Uh, let me see, I'll use Gary's. Um, you know, Gary did a great job here of, of providing some, um, uh, you know, some some details of the problem. You can see he actually filed it from the article, so uh, it's it's linked back to it. Uh, but then the nice thing with these issues is that we can have a conversation. Uh, so if you just use that, you know, hey, was this article helpful? Yes, no. OK, great. It gives us a little bit of a signal, um, but uh, but this is good because then we can ask questions and we can have a conversation um, and, and we can go back and forth to find out, you know, uh, Get some clarifications on things. So the kind of the next level of um, of work here is actually contributing. And I like to say, if you see something, fix something. Um, so I'm actually going to pick on Adam. Not really pick on him. Um, I'll I'll call him out. I'll say, hey, congratulations. Thank you, Adam. Pick away. Uh, <laughs> so and this wasn't this totally wasn't planned i but i probably couldn't have planned it better um so adam filed a pull request yesterday um he was looking at an article for desktop analytics on monitoring connection health and he noticed that the registry key didn't have a space in it so he edited the article and added a space and then he also noticed hey up here you're using you know powershell style formatting down here further in the article you're not so we fixed that too so he was reading the article he saw an issue he hit edit he fixed the art he 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 submitted a change so he submitted that change at 9 14 pacific time by the time i got in and got logged on 9 58 um i uh 
I looked at it and like, oh, this is perfect. Good, good change. Um, signed off on it. Our review team picked it up. Eight minutes later, merged it. Uh, our daily publishing cycles are around 1030 in the morning Pacific and then about 330 or so in the afternoon. So this was merged in at 10 o'clock. It was published by 1030. So in about an hour and a half after reading less than an hour and a half after reading the article, finding an issue fixed, published live the change. Um, so kudos to Adam for uh, for doing that. Thank you. Makes for a, a great example to show. Uh, so if we go to that article, let's just copy the other docs groups aren't nearly as uh, responsive as the config manager docs oh. folks. So and, <laughs> and we're you not set always, the bar really high there, Aaron. <laughs> we're not always that that responsive either. So <laughs> um, um, this was just a, a good happy example, a good happy path example. Um, so I don't know why it hasn't uh, his 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 face isn't isn't shown up there yet. But uh, Windows NT, um, not sure exactly which one it was, but oh, we could search for the bad case. Uh oh, it found it. Oh, is there another one? Oh, maybe there's another one. Oh, well. Because um, I think it actually oh, it. We, it just didn't. It didn't look like it published. If we look at, but at the. Um, yeah, it's got your change already in, though. Well, maybe not a good example. <laughs> I'll have to go. I'll have to go look into that. Um, so let me do a quick demo um, of what this looks like. So um, how to use how to clean leather shoes? No. How to use stocks? So if you remember earlier, I said, hey, you know, that's not the right URL, right? There should be a mem in there. So okay, I'm going to edit. It's going to flip over to GitHub. Uh, so the reason to have a GitHub account, one, file feedback, two, edit the docs. Um, if you've got the GitHub account, then when you come across something, you see something, you can fix it. You can submit the pull request. You can submit the issue. If you don't have a GitHub account, you come across something and you're like, oh, I got to go create a account. Uh, I don't want to do that. All right, never mind. Right. Um, so create the GitHub account. You've got it. You're, lo you're already signed in. So when you need it, you can use it. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. You know, if we had more time or if or whatever, I could go in a lot more detail. Um, <clears throat> but the basics are you hit edit on the article and then in here you see the little pencil icon. You're going to do a pencil edit. Um, I'm not going to talk about forks and repositories and branches and all that stuff. Um, there's a lot of other stuff happening here. If you understand that stuff, this will make sense. If not, don't worry about it. GitHub does a really good job of kind of hiding a lot of that stuff for you. Now I will say this with my with my test user account. This is the first time that I've done this demo under memdocs. Um, I was going to practice it yesterday and I thought, ah, you know what? I'm going to wait because I want to show you the, um, the the clean experience. Um, so fingers crossed that this works. Um, yeah, OK, so. Um, in this case, it's automatically creating a fork of the project for me. Again, you don't have to worry about this stuff, um, but if you do understand what I'm talking about, there's some of the, you know, some things happening behind the scenes here. <clears throat> so it then opens up. This is the markdown. This is the raw markdown. Uh, you can see there's some header information here at the top in terms of the, this is the date that gets published at the top of the article. That, um, if that's not automated, it's actually a, um, a field in, in the article um, as, to, as to when, when it was last updated. Uh, we don't automate that. Uh, so then I can scroll down and I'm looking for here, right here. You can see I've got this article. The tick marks are what are what make it sort of look like code. Um, so I'm just going to add in mem. Uh, look for results from docs.microsoft.com slash mem slash config mgr. Uh, yes, I'm going to go with that. There might be more instances here. For the sake of time, I'm just going to move on. Uh, scroll down to the bottom, propose changes. You can leave the default if you want. Um, I personally like to put in uh, what changed. Um, so added, this is the this is the what. So what did you change? Uh, added mem to super simple, okay? Um, don't worry about a description here. Uh, propose change. For those of you that that want a little more info, what's happening here, this is the commit. 
So you're you're adding a commit message um, and you are making a commit. So you propose changes. It's going to show you, OK, you're making some comparisons here. It's going to show you a preview of what changed. So you can double check to make sure that you didn't finger something or accidentally click elsewhere on the page. Um, green is added. OK, it's the same line. This is the old. This is the new. Um, so yep, yeah, that's the only change that I made here. So I'm going to create a pull request. Um, again, some more things going on up here in terms of the, the repositories and uh, the branches. Don't worry about it, right? Um, it, it's it's doing a bunch of things here uh, for you automatically. It's going to pull your commit message up here. So here's your commit as well um, as as the title of the pull request. And that's fine. You can leave it as is. <clears throat> and I do recommend leaving a comment here. And this comment is why did you change it? Um, so um, this is this is something that um, is just more informational between the writer and yourself. This down here, this is this lives with the article. So this is part of the article's history and part and you know it's it's associated with the article. Um, so keep this succinct and, and to the point, you know, what happened. This is more of the why. Um, the uh, URL uh, is changed, so needed to be updated, whatever. OK, um, and then create pull request. Make sure you click the second create pull request. Uh, if you're at this screen, you're not done yet. Um, you still have to create the pull request. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now I'm done. OK, um, GitHub and specifically Docs platform is going to do some additional things here shortly. Um, hopefully it's going to start. Some of the automation will kick in. There we go. Uh, our friendly bots will start adding some labels and um, and then I actually should be up. You can see it's assigned to me. I'll actually get an email notification saying um, and I should also get I've got the GitHub app on my phone. Haven't gotten that notification yet, but I usually get notified on my phone too when the, from the GitHub app. Um, so then I get notification uh, and I'll go review it. And um, as you saw in the other example with Adam, uh, I can easily sign off and get that published. So that is the super short demo of editing docs. And I look forward to seeing more edits, more contributions from the community. Um, it's a great way to get involved and uh, share your knowledge. Um, you know, there's all sorts of ways that you can contribute. The, this was a simple example of uh, fixing a problem that you see, uh, and that's certainly probably the number one thing that we see from folks is as they're reading something, they see an issue and, and they fix it. Um, if, um, you know, if you're reading an article and you've got a little nugget of information that's useful and you want to share it with other people, um, edit the article and add a tip, add a note, um, you know, add, a, add an additional URL, a link to something else. Uh, there's all sorts of ways that you can contribute um, and uh, you know if you want to do more complicated things Adams Adam has has I'll, I'll keep I'll keep uh, shining on Adam um, you know he's contributed an entire article uh, we worked together on a uh, on a PowerShell article you know a new commandlet that was missing um, so it's possible to do more complicated things um, that one was a bit of a challenge but we got through it <laughs> um, yeah, so I look forward to seeing a lot more, uh, lot more contributions from from Texas soon. Uh, at the very least, you know, make sure to file an issue and let us know if you see a problem. So uh, we do have a little bit of time left, and I noticed from the chat that Donnie said there's a couple of questions. So I do, yeah, yeah. So please keep the questions coming. Um, these have been really good, uh, Aaron. I think you're one of those guys that. Um, as soon as they find out that you're a docs guy, they're going to ask you pretty much anything. And knowing you, you could probably answer it, but I'll see if I can we'll see. keep the ones down to uh, just doc related. Uh, one of the ones that came very early in the in the presentation was what are the URLs needed to allow Community Hub through a proxy and uh, basically which way from the provider or from the local console? Good question. So it's going to be from the console. Um, and actually, that's a good note because we need to um, hub endpoints i think there are additional endpoints that we need to light up um let's see that is under oh so i'll actually let's see so site 
uh, docs.microsoft.com. I'll use my own examples here. Config MGR, uh, internet endpoints. Oh, I should have used my, uh, there we go, internet access requirements. I don't think we've added community hub here yet. I know we added, yeah, we added the ones for docs. We haven't added the one yet for community hub. Um, I think this is on another screen. I'm going to search here because I th I'm wondering if actually, you know what? I'll show you. I'll show you here. I'm going to edit this and go to the code. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you all a bit of a. Maybe a pro tip. Um, oftentimes. I will comment things out. And. So it's possible that Configuration Manager Console, Console, did I add it here as a comment? I did. Oh, huh, but I, I, I noted the issue. Oh, the issue. Oh, it's an internal issue. Nuts. OK, <laughs> but you can see I had a placeholder here in the in the markdown, so it's not published, um, but it technically is public, um, but there's not really anything anything gory here, right? Um, but you know, go look at the markdown sometimes. Um, so that's a little bit of a pro tip. Sometimes I'll have little hints there. Uh, to answer the question, I've, I've got the details. Um, I just need to go dig them up and publish them. Uh, so thanks for that. I will, thanks for the feedback. I, I added a note, we'll make sure uh, that might actually happen by the end of today. That's awesome. So keep that in mind, uh, everybody that's listening out there. Your questions can actually give Aaron more work to do. <laughs> Uh, next question, I think you already touched on this, but if you want to, if there's anything else you want to add, next question uh, is from Matthew. Are there any plans to expand the documentation for PowerShell and ConfigMan? Uh, a lot of the object classes are referenced, are documented, and require uh, some reverse engineering to figure out. Yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I know that there's, so let's see, we updated back in. Was it December? I think I don't remember when I worked with Sean on that. So a guy named Sean Wheeler on the PowerShell team. Um, he and I have been working closely together for several months. Um, and <clears throat> there's a there's a tool um, that I was unaware of. Uh, well, I was aware of, but I thought it was more of a developer tool. But um, um, it allows us to basically scan the PowerShell module and uh, pull the content out of that, and then it it. Uh, converts it into Markdown that we can then publish. So Sean ran that tool against the PowerShell module using 1902 version. Uh, that was the only version of the console he was able to track down and install of the, of the PowerShell module. Um, <clears throat> but he ran that and he updated that a couple of months ago. So uh, at least a couple of months ago, we updated uh, the published PowerShell content as of 1902. Not great, I know, but it was a step ahead. Um, I'm literally right now working on updating it for 2002. Um, I know that there were, I think maybe 15 new commandlets between what we'd published and what was in 2002, and then a bunch of other um, additions. Uh, so I was kind of going through those and um, trying to add some basic info. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to be able to, you know, make it full featured, but um, at least getting a stub out there. Then the intent, hopefully, that the community can help fill in some some examples and some other descriptions and stuff. Um, so more coming soon. Uh, it is on. It's high on my to do list, and I'm I'm trying to to chip away at it as I can. Okay, great. Um, yeah, two more quick questions here. We um, a lot of questions and a lot of interest um, in your uh, your search engine hack. Oh yeah, uh, your pro tip. Yeah. Um, maybe I, I think if you could uh, maybe blast something out on Twitter about that. Sure. We've been handing out your your Twitter handle. Awesome. Uh, yeah, everybody that loves that. So um, lots of interest in that, um, cool. both in our chat and, and elsewhere. Um, okay. Yeah, I can. And Aaron, if you've got if you've got a few minutes and you can stick around in the Q and A, yeah. and uh, there's a couple more floating around in there as well, that would be awesome. Okay. Yeah. Sure, I can. Yeah. And then the 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 last one that I had here was, and this is a great question: When feedback is submitted in docs and a moderator has taken ownership, what is a good amount of time to wait before reaching out and trying to get a status update? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, 
you know, it, it varies. Um, sometimes, gosh, I, you know, sometimes I've seen instances where I, I'll, I almost always try to comment back. Um, at the very least, you should get, um, you should see that something gets triaged. Uh, so that should be, that should be kind of minimum. Now, I'll also mention you're going to get different behaviors in different repos. Uh, so a lot of the Azure repos, they've got actually a, like a whole team of people who manage it every day um, and they've got SLAs and they're, they're a lot more um, active with it. Our, our team is active. I mean, you can see things from a couple days ago, you know, we're getting some activities, some things from two days ago, four days ago, you know, aren't yet tri even triaged. Um, I personally, for ones that I'm assigned, um, I, I always at least try to make sure that it's triaged. Um, I'll typically also, well, there's one example I didn't, but um, I'll typically also try and at least add a comment back. Um, you know, here's one where I did comment. Um, and it's usually something like, um, Oh, well, this is an example where I could say like, hey, there's some other things here. Um, oh, this is something I was actually going to go in. Uh, oh, I missed this one for CMG. Nuts. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, but I'll usually at least say something like, hey, thanks for the feedback. Uh, I need to go check on this. Uh, just to let you know that like I need to go check. Usually what that means is I need to go send an email to an engineer to ask them <laughs> what's up. And then, you know, it's dependent upon getting a response. Uh, so oftentimes that's that's the delay is the you know if e and even if there are times where I'm like I'm 90% sure of the answer, but I don't want to put out an answer that I'm not I'm not confident in. So I want to go and verify that. Um, so that's usually what the delay is. In terms of time, um, you know, I, just ask. Um, I don't think, at least personally, I think as you know, as long as you're doing it in a in a considerate way of like, hey, just checking on status on this, um, you know, after a couple of days, that's that's cool. At the same time, it's not a it's not an escalation point. Um, so if you have a burning issue and and you're stuck on something, call support. Um, and and I've said that to people too. If you know if they'll come back within a couple of hours and be like, hello, uh, response here, um, it's not a point of escalation. Uh, it's feedback on the docs. Um, you know, if you've got a, uh, you know, a, an outage or, you know, an issue that, that you need resolved quickly, you need to engage with support, uh, you know, contact your premier person um, and, and get some professional help. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, Aaron, uh, if you could maybe stick around and hit yeah, that sure. uh, Q&A a little bit more. Absolutely. Uh, we really appreciate all the questions. We really appreciate you taking time today to do this. Uh, no the problem. community is very appreciative of it. Cool. Thanks all.